This is the Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. Time to catch up with, I think it's safe to say, our favourite cabaret performer of all time. A real (laughs) underdresser. (laughs) Oh yeah, he's carved it right down for Um, us today. Live in our Melbourne studios. He's been to Perth many times and he's coming back again. We'll give you those details in a minute. Reuben Kay, welcome to the show. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here, even across even across the span of this amazing country <laughs> here in Melbourne. Can you smell the lattes? Can you smell a population of people so middle class if they had a stroke, they'd smell burning brioche? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ruben, we can see you, but you can't see us, I believe, this morning. You look amazing. I'm glad you can't see us yeah, because yeah. we basically roll out of bed and chuck yeah. a hat on. We'll ask what mm. the boys do. Anyway. Why don't you that, talk to that us? That looks better. Talk to us about your ensemble. Like, what, what My important? ensemble today? Oh, I don't know what to say. I'm just in bunny slippers and a dressing gown. (laughs) (laughs) There's a little bit more, yeah, sparkle to that. Look, I'm in a suit that is so tight, if I had to... I can't say it. I can't even say the things. It's too early. It's too filthy. I'm in a very tight suit. If I had real cow's milk at this moment, I'd have to Shawshank Redemption it out the thigh. <laughs> um, it's a hot pink ensemble. It's a three-piece, and I'm using it to cover my trauma. All <laughs> oh, right. Okay. Now, Ruben, I think it was last year, um, you know, the, um, the people that decide what's fashionable mm. were pushing the agenda of male brooches saying it can really jazz up an outfit. Sure. And I remember saying to you, Sean, you shouldn't be scared of a male yes. brooch. Mm, mm. And clearly, Reuben, you're not. What do you think about um, uh, male brooches? Talk to us. I'll tell you right now, I'm coming to you off the back of pride, possibly literally in that <laughs> metaphor. And I... <laughs> And I will tell you now, you should never be frightened of something big and shiny on your chest. As long as you can scrape it off in the morning, you're fine. <laughs> hey, hey Reuben, how much sleep did you get over the weekend? Are you, uh, are you basically still going? Sleep is for the weak and the heterosexual. <laughs> I do not have time for sleep. It's the end of the world and I'm on tour. Can I just say, right, so you know when the Melbourne Cup's on and then yep. they show everybody at the end of the day the Melbourne Cup? hedges Cup's and stuff. Yes. Carrying their shoes and stuff. Yep. I, I thought that's the lowest point. No, the lowest point is seeing people go home from Pride. Yes. Because it's the next day a glittery silver G-string in yes. the sh- harsh daylight <laughs> with, with the one broken feathered you. wing. It is and, and that and Skew wig. Yes. <laughs> Excuse me, that is an integral moment in Pride and Mardi Gras. There is no festival. There is no festival without the walk of shame, and it is not a walk of shame. It is a stagger of accomplishment. <laughs> Uh, true that. Now, you are bringing your show live and intimidating to the Regal Theatre, which is just, a, we're looking out the window at it now. It's just across the road from us, Ruben. Um, what, what's, what's happening in this show? Talk us through it. So live and intimidating is sort of the follow-up to my last show in Perth, The Butch is Back. But this <laughs> is, uh, thank you very much. I'm very clever. I'm like very it. good. Yeah, I've won a, a lot pun. of awards. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> It's calm, it's quiet, it's unassuming, it's classy. It's the kind of show you could enjoy with a martini as long as instead of an olive you had a Valium. (laughs) But at the same time, you know, just like Mama used to have, it's at the same time, it's still filthy, it's still political, it's still very much me and a three-piece band and we're taking over the Regal Theatre. I can't wait. Is there going to be some singing, Ruben? We're going to see some singing? You'll see some singing, of course there is. What, do you want me to write jokes for a full hour? No, I can do some songs as well. I've got to pad that stuff down. (laughs) We're bringing up some of our favourite songs. You've got a bit of Carole King there. Mm. You've got a bit of Bobby Gentry. And then you've got some people you might have never even heard of. And then, of course, we've got a great um, Harry Nilsson number, Without You, which we've just done at the Sydney Opera House. I did my Sydney Opera House debut. And I tell you what, that Sydney Opera House crowd, they had not seen any anything like this in the oh, Joan Sutherland Theatre. <laughs> hey, Ruben, have you mastered the TikToks yet? Uh, I have mastered, I have slaved, I have dommed and I have subbed the TikToks. <laughs> I am the master of 30-second content and many football players can attest to that. <laughs> <laughs> I just have to say, TikTok, I, I could never, I, I just can't approach it because it looks, everything looks too clever. Like, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, everything like, you know, Even when they like put their head down and lift their head up and they're wearing a different outfit, yeah. I couldn't do it. It's too much. Yeah, but you see, you're not meant to think that you can do it because, I mean, look at you, you can't. (laughs)
You're, you think it just looks smarter, but you think it looks too smart, but that's just because you think it looks smarter than you. And in that, maybe you're right. It's, I think the thing about TikTok is it really takes a fast processing kind of capability. And due to the fact that I was diagnosed with ADHD at a young age but never medicated, it really is the art form and the media for me. Yeah, you really can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> you, ha- you have what? made ADHD work for you, yeah. though, haven't you? Well, not for my parents' marriage, but definitely for my <laughs> career. <laughs> the Nathan, Matt and Sean podcast. We're talking about the worst things to have an accident with because of either the driver, the vehicle that you crashed into. The nun. The nuns involved. Lauren, hello. Hey, how are you doing? Good, Hi, Lauren. Lauren. What happened? Okay, so I was driving a little gets at the time, yeah. um, went through a roundabout and was hit by, it was kind of like a crane, it was sort of folded over, um, and the top bit went through the back side of my car, speared oh, through oh. the back, smashed my window, um, and yeah, like I didn't get hurt, but it was like literally kind of at my back seat by the time it had gone through, and when I got out and had a chat with the guy, he was like, oh yeah, it happens quite a bit because we find it really hard to see. Oh. Oh. So, so Lauren, you're talking about the crane arm. Was part of it came through yeah. the car. Well, oh, gee, yeah, it happens quite a bit because we can't yeah. see. Yes, yeah, and then like he was like it was like nothing for him. He was like, oh yeah. Okay. Oh wow! Well. Like, Just all my details. Like he's cl- clearly done it so many yeah, times 100%. before. <laughs> like crazy. literally, how many cars has he impaled? I know. <laughs> I guess so. Give them a wide berth if you see a crane yeah. on the road. Is the is the moral of that story? Yeah. Oh, it'd be like playing real life skill tester, wouldn't yes, it? Yes, it is a bit. <laughs> Donkey Kong. It it lift it up. Thanks, Lauren. Horrifying story. Ashley, hello. Hey, how you going? Hey, good, good Ash. Ash. What happened? Hey, um, I just got a, a bit of a long story short. But when I was younger, yeah. um, I was driving. I lived out in Serpentine, so country road. Yep. Um, I was driving from my house to my girlfriend's house at ten o'clock at night. Yeah. Um, Kind of went around a bend, and um, I couldn't really see that well because I didn't have my high beams on. But um, I hit something, and I didn't know what it was. Yeah. So I rang my girlfriend. And I was like, "I've just hit something. Like, was there something in the middle of the road?" Yeah. Um, and she was like, "Yeah, yeah, there were kids in the middle of the road." Oh, and um, so I, like my heart sunk, and so I was like, "Oh no, I was like, I've killed someone." God. <laughs> anyway, I pulled over, and then. Um, Got out of the car and the, the car was a bit damaged on the on the corner of the side. Yeah, I was like, oh no. Oh. Um, so I started running back to where it was, yeah. and turned out it was one of my mates that had been like drinking, um, and they were mooning cars in the <laughs> middle of the road. Yes. So I've come around the bend and I've cleaned him up, um, and then it was like whinging and that that there was there was of rocks in his farm and stuff like that, and turns out yeah, um, he had indicator lens like wedged in his butt cheek. <laughs> Did you hear that? Uh, I hit him at 100 k. So oh, I was oh my God. I'm surprised oh the car didn't go up his ass. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so luckily, like, any closer to the centre of the car, and, yeah, yes. probably would have done a lot more damage than a broken foot and some indicator lens wenched in his butt cheeks. But, butt. yeah, he got real lucky. Pulling. Didn't break a coccyx. I mean, how bruises his ass? <laughs> Who's going to rub those corkies out? That's the other thing. Pulling, he, he got an accident because he was pulling brown eyes like cars. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember when you used to do that? Yeah. Just moving cars? I know, it was but a night out. in the middle of the road? In the middle of the road? Are you doing it on the side of the road? <laughs> like a gentleman? Exactly, or a lady. <laughs> oh, Ashley. Ashley that extraordinary. I'm is glad. so funny. And a much happier ending than it could have been, oh. let's face it. I was pretty keen to hear the long story too, Ash. Oh, yeah, Ash. <laughs> we'll take you down the pub one day. We want to hear the extended version. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. How are you doing? Hey, Hello. How are you going, mate? Norman? Do we call you Fat Boy Norman? I don't know. Cookie? Whenever well, anyone's got a famous fr- name, you don't know what to say. <laughs> My friends call me Norman. Great, okay. So you'd like so- us to call you Fat Boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just slim. <laughs> Walked straight into that one, didn't we? <laughs> oh, it's going to be like that, is it? <laughs> hey, firstly, before we get into it, um, uh, what's all that stuff on the shelves behind you? Are they books? Are you a well-read man? <laughs> no. Okay, they cool. are CDs. CDs. No. Oh, thank God! Yeah, I was CDs. Have to cancel it. Yeah, they're also. I don't read. I don't do books. I do. I do CDs. Yeah, CDs. It's C- called physical media. Yeah, now. I don't even have a CD player at my house anymore. But well, this is kind. Of, this is kind of my archive. This is sort of yeah. a, a bit of my life. I'm. I'm a bit of a hoarder. I probably don't need them. 
And this entire collection behind me could probably fit into a memory stick this big. <laughs> but I like them. They're, they're like friends of mine. They're like old friends that just hang around. Yeah, uh, it's, it's when streaming started and everyone got rid of their box sets of DVDs. Yeah. So it was a real sad time because, yeah. you know, <laughs> right. you felt like the local blockbuster. <laughs> yeah, no, I've, I've still got my DVDs too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in the other room, though. <laughs> They're, and the VHSs. They're in a DB room. I've got, I've, I was in my store in the other day of Norman and um, I found my VHS player and I've still got it there. I just thought I'll keep it just in, I'm a, I'm a just in case person. I always keep things just in case. Yeah, no, I think that's, uh, you're a man after my own heart. I think that's a very sensible. If you've got the room, if you've, you know, obviously if you live in a very small flat, you might have to, you know, sort of. Downstairs. But if you've got the room, hold on to it because they're, <laughs> they're rapidly becoming like museum pieces. Yes. <laughs> and and there might, there's, there's probably a lot of people who've got kind of important points of their life, like weddings and things on VHS, and they'll need that VHS player one day to watch them. Then you'll be the king then, of the world. Yeah, that's no, the king no, of the no, world. Not, not, so Norman, not one person ever watches their wedding film because no. nobody gives a rat's ass if you bring this up at any stage. Hey, come and sit down and watch this. Oh, the great memories. Yes. No, no there goes. is. There's someone that's been cheated on and their partner's left them and then they watch it crying. I was going to say, it depends It depends if the, the marriage lasts longer yeah, than the yeah. format that you recorded it on. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. That's a really good point. Hey, Norman, um, I was speaking to a, a friend recently who always travels overseas, always goes to Europe, right? And he ends his holiday, or sorry, his working trip, always with a trip to Ibiza to wind down. Now, I said to him, <laughs> to how's down. that possible? <laughs> Ibiza, that's not a wind down place. Now, you go, the, oh, I'd imagine you've been going yeah. there for 40 bloody years. That's not a wind down place, is it? Surely. Oh, it is. Yeah. <laughs> really? It's. It's. Yeah. I mean, it's. It, the, the beauty of the island is you can wind up or wind down, and you can do that. You know, on a daily basis. Uh, no, because the, the stuff that the that you see on the telly that you kind of like the yeah sort of drunken louts in the streets and the super clubs. That's yep. that's kind of like one square mile of the island, and it's quite kind of um, condensed there. And the rest of the island is really quiet. I mean, oh, I, mean I, I go there with my family. I tell my family that my kids are there every year since they were born. Uh, but we stay up in the north, and it's only like 20 minutes' drive. Yeah. But you're in absolutely in the middle of nowhere. So, yeah, I mean, a lot of people go there for, like, yoga retreats and so on. And most of the island is really quiet. Yeah. It's like Ubud and Kuta. Well, you in just Bali. don't see it, don't you? You know, yeah. I beat it. It's just yeah. go, you go, you're not sleeping. Well, you're going absolutely mental. The only person time. that we speak to really regularly about um, I beat her is um, James Blunt because yeah. he has a house there yeah. and he yeah. tells us, you know, like it's a bit of a party house and he's got a bar and I'm, I'm sure you've probably been there, haven't you? I've, not, I've bumped into him many times there. I'm not, I've not been invited back to his house yet. <gasps> oh. oh, oh, celebrity Ooh. rift. Here's Everyone. a few. <laughs> clickbait, yeah. clickbait Daily few. Mail. <laughs> <laughs> clickbait. That's pretty exciting. Hey, Norman, I wanted to ask you about um, Praise You, um, one of your biggest hits, and in particular the film clip was one of the things that stood out of that time for, you know... Because it was so different. It was so different. Did you have... Um, um, any creative control about that? How did that come about? Because that, I mean, apart from the song being absolutely brilliant, but the the film clip really impacted everybody. Well, it, it was Spike's idea. Spike Jones um, liked me and wanted to work with me, so he made a little tape of him doing a stupid dance to Rockefeller <laughs> Skank. Yeah, and he he gave me a VHS of it and just said, "Oh, I, you know, I, I saw this guy dancing," and I was like, "This is the kind of video we should be making." But I think he meant it, maybe he meant it as a demo, I don't know what, but I just said to the record company, I want to just make this that guy, guy yeah. and just doing stupid dancing because it just makes you laugh and it's much cheaper than trying yes, to, you yes. know. <laughs> and I, and it was, for me, it was a bit of a statement against videos and that would just cost so much money and they were just kind of glorified adverts for, yeah. for you and how cool you look and yeah. you're with big breasts and, you know. Yeah. So it was kind of a sort of statement, but it was... Spike's genius was to make it a really uh, entertaining statement, <laughs> yeah. um, and it was dirt cheap, but it was just had a it had a sort of a a, um, a charm to it. Yeah, uh, yeah, you, right. So I thought you would have been there watching it because that would have been hilarious. Because oh, wasn't it? It was sort of mostly. Bought, were you there? You were there? I, for for, pra, for, for praise you, I was there. Yeah, and then I made a little cameo, and you, I walk into the middle yes. at one point, and then the the thing gets knocked over. Uh, no weapon of choice. Weapon of I was choice. supposed yeah. to be there. 
I was supposed to be there, but my darling wife decided to have our firstborn son. Oh, the pretty most, Very weekend. Crazy. Yeah. That they were filming. I figured I, I should stay at home and watch the birth of my son rather than do my cameo. <laughs> you know what? We should really do That's... a segment where wives apologise when they give birth and how it upset their husband's day. Unbelievably so. Well done, though. <laughs> we really should. Yeah. It's, it's overdue. Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. Here's more of our chat with Norman Cook, or as you might know him, Fatboy Slim. So there's so many hot artists at the moment. Um, you know, Three of them are being Harry Styles, Billie Eilish, say Lizzo, right? Yeah. So if you had to do a co- collab between either of those, who would it be? Harry Styles, uh, Lizzo. Lizzo. All Lizzo. The way. Isn't she Lizzo amazing? all the way. Yeah, she's fabulous. I love yeah. her. Isn't she amazing? Yeah, I, w- I want to have her babies. I love her. <laughs> <laughs> And, and Norman, DJs these days are so high profile. I mean, imagine when you started, that wouldn't have been the same case. You know, over here, I, I, my, my kids and um, a lot of my friends are into Paul Fisher. But you watch the lifestyles flying all around the Who, world. Incidentally, I want to have his babies too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, lo- get I love him. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm just amazing how much it's grown over time. Uh, uh, instead of, you know, just seeing a singer out there, people have just gone to see DJs flat out. Yeah. Have you got a problem with that? No, no, no. It's, just, it's just grown so. But you know what it is, so Sean. Hard. But think about it, right? So when when Norman started, um, DJing was hard work. You know what yep. I mean? It was actually real records and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> Nowadays, it's all just done on computers, Norman. They're all hacks, aren't they? Yeah, we're just button pushing us. <laughs> I mean, back in the day, back in the day, basically in in the food chain of like nightclubs. Yeah, yeah. We were just just above the glass collector, <laughs> <laughs> and and got. Paid about the same as the glass collector. Oh, no um, so no, it's in in my career I've seen us go from you know you know we used to fight to to have a monitor. Yeah, wow. So that we could hear what we were playing. And the, and the club manager would go, why do you need a separate monitor in the booth? It's like, so we can hear what we're doing, so we can yeah. mix in time. And they're like, oh, God. Whereas now we get treated well and we yeah. get, you know, we get riders and, and, and uh, the trappings of, of um, style. No, it's, it's, it's been a lovely voyage to see. I mean, I, I was DJing all the way through my life, but yeah. it yeah. was never a career. It was a hobby. It's yeah, just something yeah. you did. Yep. because you love records and it was just something to do in, in the evenings. But it, you could never make a living out of it in those yeah. days and, yeah. and now we can make a, a very good living, so I'm, I'm not going to moan. Yeah, you see someone like Fisher, we're doing a little bit more than pushing buttons. Well, we are pushing buttons, oh, but we're pushing emotional buttons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, no, get wait, there, what, what's on your ride aisle? Like, you'd be pretty yeah. low-key, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, uh, Red Bull, six cans of Red Bull, Yeah, yeah. some fizzy water... <laughs> Uh, two air horns <laughs> and a towel. <laughs> and I would like the door locked. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I mean, I, I've, I've been around long enough. I've done, you know, I don't drink or anything. I've been around long enough that there's no point in asking for M and M's. Yes, you know, with the, it's the green done. ones but... taken out or anything yeah. like that. So yeah, no, I'm, I'm I'm a pretty cheap date when it comes. Okay, to so the, the air horns good, are good just norm. for you to use when you're performing. Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Good. I I I'd like to. We know because that's that, that's that's how to keep it real. See, because every out of the many buttons that DJs yeah. can push, yeah. there's one button that goes. <laughs> You've heard that button, yeah, yeah. yes, of course. Yeah. But I figure it's I figure it's much lovelier for the crowd to actually hear a real air horn. <laughs> I'm pretty, with you, mate. Pretty pokey things, and they just I tighten mean, your. That's why they pay you the big bucks. That is. <laughs> That is why you're the headliner. That's right, oh, Norman. Oh, yeah, yeah, I use real air horns. <laughs> well, there you go, mate. Um, <laughs> see the man in style. Uh, Sunday 7th of May at Burswood Park. It's an 18-plus show. You can go to frontiertouring.com slash fatboyslim to get tickets. Oh, it's going to go off. sell out. That's going to be massive. Thank you so much for talking to you're us. You're hilarious. Norman, Thanks, you're Norman. Bloody That's legend. Sure. legend. Thanks for caring. <laughs> care, we care we deep do. like a river. It's the Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. Yesterday early, we got the opportunity to catch up with David Croft, who's the voice of F1 racing for Sky Sports. Everybody knows his name who's into this sport. Oh, you know his voice. That's you know sure. his voice. Yeah, you certainly do. Um, he's coming to Perth, actually, Monday the 3rd of April and Tuesday the 4th of April. So we got to have an interview via Skype with David. Yes. Yep. Um, our good friend Zach, who works with us, he brought in some F1 hats. Well, he's oh. a massive F1 yeah. fan, so we gave him the opportunity to ask some questions as well. Zach, you would remember, he was the person that won the go-karting the other day, even mm. though Sean apparently won, but Zach. Yes. One, and, and the reason Zach was so good is that he watches yeah, so much yeah, F1. Yeah. And I he brought up, he brought those hats in for us as yeah, well. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we all were. He's like, anyway, hats. we're wearing hats. This is how it went. <laughs> 
who's who's wearing a McLaren hat for a start? Sean. Sean, right. I was going to write Sean Eternal Optimist. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Nat, Nat, you're the one with the glasses. Yes, right? that's me. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you got that. a cap. Ferrari, too. Ferrari. Signed by Ferrari, Sebastian. excellent. S- signed oh, by oh, Sebastian oh. Vettel. Yeah. Oh, vintage. Vintage yes. Ferrari. <laughs> I love it. And Nathan, yes. what, what's your hat say? I've got Red Bull. Oh, it's a Red Bull. I couldn't quite see it on here. It's right, so green. Glory Hunter uh, <laughs> is hoping it's finally going to be their year. And like I say, the Eternal Optimist. That's the new name of the show. Love yes. this. Well, um, we've got a very special guest here mm. because this is oh, Zach. Yeah. Zach's not usually on the radio. Zach, get over to the microphone. You are yes. on the radio now. Zach does production. Um, here and he heard that you were going to be on the show and it's akin to a 15 year old girl getting to meet Harry Styles yes it is I'm very excited he's also the owner of all the hats yeah and what hat are you wearing Zach Zach, come and say hello I'm wearing hello I'm wearing a um, Lewis Hamilton Mercedes hat oh certainly jumping on the bandwagon David don't you reckon (laughs) yes to be honest it, 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 it so last year, but as a Steamish boy myself, I cannot find fault with your choice of outfit, Zach. <laughs> You're a top man. I the shirt on You'll as go well. go far in life. <laughs> well, David, it's an absolute well, pleasure to have you on, and we're looking forward to you to coming to Perth and mm. doing a few shows. Mate, the F1 circus yeah. is in full flight at the moment. and You must be uh, pretty pumped for the start of the season. Absolutely. Uh, it's gone midnight here in Bahrain, yeah. and I've been here since testing. But do you know what? What's a late night between friends or, or an early morning? Thanks for dressing up, all of you. <laughs> Thank you uh, for this interview. Yeah, listen, I can't wait to get going. The, don't get me wrong; we needed a break over the winter. The winter's been good. The World Cup was at just the right time for me to lay on the sofa and watch three games of footy a day. Yeah. Um, but I want to get back to the day job now. You know, England have failed to bring it home. It's time to get back on with the real sport. And um, testing has just whetted our appetite. Three days of uh, of testing at the circuit. What can we read into it? Who knows? We'll find out on the weekend. But, yeah, excitement. David, there's the whole, you know, race and commentating and all that mm. sort of stuff, but I want to know about how they treat David Croft. Um, yes. Right now, the room that you're in, Um, do you get, like, just, do you get a room that has, like, a separate dining room and stuff, or is yeah. it, do you get what we all get, which is just, like, a bed and then, like, the TV cabinet? Is, is it a full-on suite? Yeah, nearest thing I got to a dining room today was a bag of Haribos that I got from the local <laughs> garage. Uh, um, I'd like to show you this room, but I've been in it. For um, um, it sh- you can tell. I would just say if my fiance was here, yeah. I don't think we'd be engaged anymore. There's there's way too many. There's like a floor drobe in one corner yes. um, where I've missed the hangers. There's, there's a couch buried under some shirt somewhere. Um, <laughs> It was a magnificent, and I have to say, this is the five star suite. Uh, the magnificent view of the flyover right outside my room, <laughs> where um, at various stages in the night, various locals decide that hooning is a great idea at kind of two o'clock in the morning. Well, I, guess I know you're there. Yeah, that you would appreciate. Yeah. That. I think you're at the window commentating. If anyone's going to appreciate that, it's you. <laughs> I mean, look, don't get me wrong. I appreciate the sound of a V8 engine. I just appreciate it more at 8 o'clock in the morning, not 2 o'clock in the morning. So we've got Zach here, as you know, mm. and um, Zach has mm. come and he's done homework and written <laughs> some questions. <laughs> Right, I'm tragic. Ask Crofty. Go to some of your favourite questions. Here we go. Okay, well, I have 20 questions. No, 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 but they're yes or no questions. All right, yes or no. So pretty quick. So, okay, all right. Will Red Bull and Max win both titles again this year? First off, Zach, right? These three, these three people have bullied you into this, right? So yes. they haven't done oh, they no. do any research themselves. I think I know. No, 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 no. Hey, 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 this is Daniel Ricciardo territory, yeah, yeah. so we're all and, over it. And also, David, whether Zach's here or not, we still would have done no research. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Then. Fair enough. Just make sure, Zach, that you collect your fee as you're walk, walking out. I'm a new agent. We'll give him his three dollars. We'll allow him to stay for another day. <laughs> he's, he's a good man. Will they win both titles? Um, short on. Answer, uh, possibly. Long answer. I think Max will be the drivers' champion, but I actually think Ferrari. And Ooh. to be honest, Nat, this could be a good year to bring out your vintage Ferrari cap here. I think Ferrari 
will score more consistent good points than Red Bull will. Red Bull will probably get more wins. Ferrari will score consistently more points. I think Ferrari will win the Constructors this year. Yeah. Let's face it, it's been a while since that's happened, and it's about time it did. Crofty, one of the things about the F1s we've seen over many years is the amount of money spent in there, and sometimes it can be just, you know, one team that's just put in all the all, all the money yeah, and getting the right out. results. Mm. And with that, there's always trying to make it a level playing field. How, how are we able to see consistently teams changing who wins more often than what we have in the past? Sean, um, if you've written that question yourself, go to the head of the class. My <laughs> he actually got off Zach's that's, page. That's, that's magnificent. Look, you're absolutely right. One team has dominated the turbo hybrid era since 2014 way too much. Yeah. Red Bull, though, uh, stopped the Mercedes um, championship succession last year albeit they go into this season very much on the front foot, looking like they could well win it again. Um, the cost cap will stop teams spending obscene amounts of money to get two cars from A to B. And at least we have a, a, an upper ceiling limit, although a lot of teams still not hitting that limit, uh, to be fair. What I think is is more relevant is the is the limit in wind tunnel and, and CFD um, research time, computational yep. fluid dynamics. Never thought you'd hear that no. at this time of the morning. Um, Quite erotic, actually, Dave. <laughs> 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 <It's not bad. laughs> I always thought CFD was some dodgy prog rock band from uh, Canada when I was growing up, but no, the computational fluid dynamics is what we exist in. Um, that's where they design the car on the computer. Then it goes into the wind tunnel for testing. Um, Aston Martin finished seventh last year. They get 100% of the wind tunnel time. Red Bull, as champions, get 70% because it's a sliding scale uh, of less right. time, the more successful you are. But, of course, they had that penalty for spending too much money in the cost cap era, so it's down to 63%. That has got to hurt when you go from 320 wind tunnel runs over a period to 201 it's a big difference, so it limits your development. That said, Red will start with a really good uh, footing, so it might take a couple of years for that to, to, to really come into force. But it's why I think Ferrari have got a chance this year, because they're not as far behind Red Bull as, say, Aston Martin were, mm. finishing seventh, and they've got that extra time in the wind tunnel, that extra CFD time to, to really make it count. And I hope it does happen, because... We don't want to see Red Bull having to tow a caravan around as some sort of success <laughs> uh, ballast. But this should be, in technical terms, yes. the equivalent to at least you know, a trailer tent. Nathan, Nat and Sean in podcast form. We are talking about when the police get called for what doesn't turn out to be much of a crime. Yep. Let's talk to Laura. Hello. Hi, how's it going? Great, Hi, Laura. Laura. What happened? Okay, so um, for years I've been doing this when I get a scam phone call, and I'd had two from South Korea this particular day, I put on a Polish accent <laughs> and tell them that I've just killed my husband. My husband's dead on floor, blood, blood, and I'll carry on. And they generally hang up. Um, so this particular day, the guy, well, whoever it was, but he didn't say who he was either. Um, so next thing, he, we ended up hanging up after a couple of minutes. Yeah. And then about 20 minutes later, I get a call from St John's Ambulance, and they said, we've got an ambulance on the way. We just need more detail. And I said, I'm sorry, that's been a mistake. You know, cancel the ambulance. <sighs> and then I rang my husband, who was at home this day, and then I started to tell him, and we could hear the dog bark. Yeah. And yeah. Two cars from Yanchi, <laughs> and they had a picture of my husband in the car, so they knew who they were looking for. <laughs> so the police oh, came with a picture of your, to look for your murdered husband? Yes. <laughs> so the scammer has called the cops and they're a scammer or was it or somebody was legitimate that you got confused? It ended, ended up being the ANZ bank, but he oh. never said it for the whole <laughs> <country>. <laughs> Well, can I just say Laura. how community minded the ANZ yes, bank is? exactly. It? That is amazing that they report a possible murder. So, ANZ. Laura, when the scammers ring, you just go straight into a... They ask you a question generally and then you just go, no, I've killed my husband. How, how do you approach yeah. that or you just... So, well, you know, I'll, I'll wait and see who it is because generally there's a pause when, when you answer so yes. you know it's coming from another country or something. Right. So 
So, you know, once I realise that they're just someone like that, I go, oh, you know, my husband dead on floor, I hit him with pan, blood, <laughs> blood everywhere. Is that your Polish accent, is it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's not great. Oh, yeah. My it's husband dead good. on the floor, <laughs> I hit him with pan. <laughs> <laughs> Laura. I think, I think we just want to apologise to all yes. the Polish people. Yes, that's listening. right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Thank you, you, Laura. Um, Jen Dobry to all our Polish oh, friends. No. Uh, Sarah, hello. Hi. Hi, Sarah. Sarah. Now, were the cops called on you or did you call the cops? What happened? Well, I called the cops because this is when I was living in Melbourne a few years ago now. It was late at night and I was asleep and my boyfriend at the time, he worked in hospitality, so he was away at night working. And I was, yeah, asleep and I could hear some scratching at my window. Mm. So I was sure someone was trying to break in. So I called my boyfriend at work and I said, someone's trying to break in, you've got to come home. He's like, well, I'm not going to make it in time, so (laughs) call the police. I was like, okay, so I've called the police. I could still hear the scratching. Mm. The police have showed up with torches and they're checking the house. They've tapped on my door, the front door, and they said, I think we found the culprit. (laughs) And there was a massive wombat at my door. (laughs) A wombat. A wombat. (laughs) Yeah. Where were you living in Melbourne that there's a wombat bloody wombat roaming wombat. the street? A bloody wombat. flaming it's wombat. It's disgusting suburbia. What? Yeah, it was a wombat. <laughs> yeah, that is police worthy. It was started worthy. at my window and then it moved around the house to the front door. So when they came, he was yeah. actually hanging off my front door, the fly screen door. Yeah. And they literally said, we found your culprit and laughed at me. Now, did they then at that point, because a wombat is so foreign to see, say, is, excuse me, miss, is this your wombat? Or did they ask if you own the wombat? <laughs> no, it definitely wasn't so my wombat. Did they take the wombat away? No, I think it just moves on. <laughs> to what? Yeah, it's it's to the next area. house where then they call the police again it because no one thinks probably. there's going to be a wombat at their door. Yeah, exactly. Jumps on the bloody tram and heads to Richmond or something. <laughs> <laughs> you can't, I'm sorry, if you find a wombat in suburbia, you can't just let it go. <laughs> Don't you then, like, corral the wombat or, or and take it call, to some yeah, wombat centre? A wildlife rescue <laughs> mob or something? Like, you don't just let a wombat go. Are we talking in a city? Where, 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 <laughs> where were you? What suburb was it? I actually can't even remember. It was so long ago and I yeah. moved around so much. I think it was, like, south something. I can't, I <laughs> south something. Well, south Yarra. <laughs> no. <laughs> it was a long time But ago. it wasn't a wombat area, was it? Well, I don't know. I feel like wombat might have been common around Melbourne. What are you talking no, about? Right. Okay, I, wait, there's I lived in Melbourne. Never did so I see a wombat. When you were living there, how no. many wombats did you come across in your daily adventures? I just assumed it was normal. No, no you're in suburbia. If something you've never seen rocks up at your house, it's not normal because <laughs> you've never is. seen so that. So wombats are normally in Queensland. No, they do have them Down in Victoria, Victoria but Australia, in the country. Okay. They, they're in the country. Yeah, yeah, okay, because they're digging their own holes and stuff. Just by the same way, we don't have. I don't have an echidna in my backyard here. It's because... <laughs> They belong in the country. But my thing with this is still the police let the wombat yes. go. No, that is <laughs> completely valid. Thank you, Sarah. Sarah. That's very puzzling. This is a podcast of Nathan, Nat and Sean. We're joined by West Coast Eagles Premiership player Will Schofield. He's the KFC super coach at AFL ambassador Did this he year. bring but a cheeky bucket here. in with him or what? He's coming here teeing off about the radio oh, station. So so we're, so we're a bit off. We're a bit off guard. So, Scoey, what did you say? I said, what a magnificent building. <laughs> no. I'm so impressed. No, I, a I radio said, station that Kings would only be in. I said, well, what do you think about this? And he goes, oh, it's just another radio station, really, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and um, how around. long was your football career for? <laughs> uh, 14 years. And I'm just another footballer, to be honest. If we're describing things and how they look, yep. if you describe it as a footballer, be like, no, oh, mate. Yeah, you like, yeah. could be the poster boy for Jim's mowing. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> no, you've never been in Nova your entire football that's, career. That's the comment I made. Like, I've, I was here 15 years. Well, never, that's not Masto. one invite. Masto kind yeah, of monopolized. Yeah, yeah, we had, when yeah. he used to come in here, right, I used to yeah, listen to you guys yeah, on the Mastos yeah. on, right? Oh, but oh, only when no, all the time, all the time, all the time. Oh, he right. used to be in here jingling his keys around yeah, and be, was, be yeah. twirling this. He was always doing things on the paper. He'd always grab my paper and draw 
one thousand doodles on it. We don't mean I was sitting next to doodles, him in a footy club doodles. for fifteen years. I know it was all over my journals and things like that. It's club. just the same. We got very good at it, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, Scoey, on that, um, we also had uh, Luke Shuey who started off yeah, here for a, for a short time, and when we had this, like, we had like this witch doctor lady who came in. She was a white feathered witch or mm. something because um, he kept getting injured right yeah. at the time. So we thought this oh. would help. So, so she yes. came in and did like this yeah. thing around but him. We she's didn't realise she's gone well. Yeah. Then, yeah. Isn't she? So we, we didn't realise, right? So we just thought this witch is going to come in and, and you know, like, thirty it'll, seconds, it'll be a bit, be wave funny. some anyway, feathers around. Next minute, she's covered him in smoke and she's throwing chicken blood in his face, <laughs> and, like everything like that. And you can just tell, like, and it's going forever. And he's just so <laughs> awkward. Anyway, what happened afterwards, Sean? Well, he never came back the following year. <laughs> <laughs> And we lost him. We're, all of a sudden, we're, we know that he went to an opposition radio. So we've and met his wife. There. So, yeah. I was fines master at the football club. Yes. And I believe, look, if my memory serves me correct, I think he and Ryan Crowley did a love song uh, ballad together. Yes. And, I, and, and it had to be removed. There was a few things on social media. The club wasn't happy. And I got the audio and I played it in fines oh. for around 12 months. Oh, every, did every, <laughs> every single fine session. I love it. Like, I, love I, will, it. I will always love you. Or It was like for Valentine's Day or something. It was crazy. Does that sound right? Yeah, yeah, yeah it does. No, no, it sounds <laughs> very wrong. That's yeah. what it sounds like. <laughs> now, of course, we've got the governor who's part of our team as of yes. a couple of seasons now, how do you feel about the governor? Oh, I feel great about the governor. Well, he's in, my, he's in my super coach team. I mean, yeah. I don't okay. know why I'm here, but he's in, he's in my but super coach team. But he's expensive. So do you got to look for someone else? Yeah, but he's good. That's he's why he's expensive. Is. You know how things work. If you pay money, you get yeah. the best. He's so, got yeah. pretty brittle ribs, though. Yeah, how do you... There's a couple of... Well, no. Well, he's he's dishing out rib break. He broke Travis Boak's pretty much spine on the yeah. weekend in the preseason game. Yeah, so, smashed him, didn't he? Yeah, absolutely smashed him. So, yeah, Gov's in. Um, we've got a couple of bargains. Nat Fife's in my team. Elliot Yo's in my team. These sorts of guys, you got to get them in. I'm They're very, I'm bargains, very West though, Australian obviously. biased. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I, How I do much love time do you put into Supercoach? Because uh, you see people who just really pour over it, and it is the focus of their week. Is that you? I've been playing another type of fantasy football for about 15 years, mm-hmm. right? So, oh, who would you, who would you date? Something that's got that. I, no, I, no <laughs> that's I, it's a name that I cannot say. But now but, I'm over at Supercoach. Yeah. Right. Ambassador for Supercoach. I am. I'm just putting all of my time and effort yeah. over into Supercoach. Yeah. So how long? So I that spend? was that other fantasy. Effect. I'll say it's from Pornhub. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just all feet. Yeah. It was amazing. And the things he has them doing on that football field, Sean, is unbelievable. Mm, I've seen Very some good. of them. <laughs> Scott, one of the great questions I want to ask you is that um, we'll decide if it's being, great. being sponsored by KFC, is this unlimited food that you can uh, grasp onto at some stage going through a drive-through? I mean, how do I look? Do I look? No, do you I haven't looked like you've attacked the full Zinger Burger I, I've no, got scenario. You look I've got to be honest. So over my podcast back mm. chat with mm. Shawnee Max Bain, on one of the yeah. great episodes. I would know. I haven't been invited. Yeah. 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 You've got to play sport so to get on there, mate. Yeah, so. I played volleyball in high school. Hey, you want to come on? I'll, I'll interview. You. Don't worry about that. He's got another great story about a gym. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. Oh, like back it, yeah. chat's doing fat chat at the moment, right? So I've I've had a good look at myself on the scales. Not looking good. Right, so I used to play at about 97, 98 kilos. What are you now? I, and that's that's carbo loaded. Yeah, yeah I was yeah. one hundred and eight about three weeks ago. So I was ten kilos over my. So you put on your muscle. Tall. Is that what you're muscle, saying? Muscle, correct. All muscle. KFC muscle. Yes. <laughs> yes. But fat chat, we just talk about what it's how bloody hard it is to keep weight off in this real life that you don't get to get paid. To and you keep want Sean to come back on that off. again? Is well, what you're saying? No, no. I'm, <laughs> all I'm saying is. KFC has been very good to me over the last <laughs> six months or so, and I'm doing my best. I've lost five kilos in three weeks. Oh, well done. Great. But it's really great to hear you've got a great relationship with KFC. Weird that you didn't come in with any. Mm, is mm. that not strange? That's well, strange. Early. That's no, early. No, no, are you us. joking? This is like lunchtime for us. Are so. you jo- We'll smash seven Zinger Burgers right now. <laughs> right now, right in your face. And I'll drink a bucket of their gravy. <laughs> I'll pour oh, it over joking. your head like Gatorade in a sporting right. challenge. Gravy's oh, the best. Gravy. Potato and gravy at KFC used to make me go through, uh, go to every time. I could just go down there and just get a large potato and gravy and just knock that off with those yeah. plastic spoons. Easy done. Hey, I want to know how much um, putting on weight after the game gets in your head because Sean does a thing called yes. cry, um, cry, um, cry eating. So right. and secret eating as well. Just eating. So he's a secret <laughs> eater, he's a cry eater. So so he'll he'll eat something and then he'll cry. run around the box crying. Uh, yes. I flog myself. To... No, yeah. that's a different thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. the point. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. oh, I think it's it's bloody hard. Yeah. It's, I think it's it's you hard. Know why? 
Oh, you know why? Well, because you're not getting paid to exercise. And not anymore. just that. Yeah. Not just that. This is, and I've worked it out, which is why it's quite detrimental to athletes. Is because you guys have had athletes' bodies where everyone's gone, oh, oh god, look how amazing saying. they look. And then for you not to have it, everyone will always look at you and go, oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh that's not panned out too well, has it? <laughs> I have to. Speak, Whereas to have never had an athlete's body, I'm only going to ever look better. Yeah, cool. <laughs> oh, you have to ask my wife about you know the athlete's body. I don't know if I've ever been that ripped guy walking around the club. I've never yeah. been. I've never been Sean McManus. You know, mm. I've never done that. No, because you've got a premiership. Um- <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> holy, holy moly! That was a low one, but accurate, <laughs> brutal. Yeah, that was. I mean, if we're talking about West Coast and Fremantle's yeah. chances this year, though. You would mm. say Fremantle has a better chance of winning a premiership. Oh, you would, this year than yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, over the last couple of years, you would say so. I would think that it was going to be a tough year for West Coast, but a lot of people are up and about over the fact that a lot of their experienced players are available and they've got some young blood coming through. Where, so where do you sit? You've had a... West Coast at, will play finals. Um, that's a big call. Yeah, no, we, we, West Coast will play finals. Uh, I, this tw- year? Are you talking got, about this year? Oh, yeah. this. Oh, no, at some point in time, <laughs> in a couple of decades. No, they've got, they've got 12 new players back in their side. They've got six guys, all Australians, best and fairest, that played under 10 games, and yeah. they've got new guys. They're, they're just a new team. You can't actually look at last year. Fremantle, on the other hand, mm. they'll be top four. They'll challenge for a premiership. Flag medal. That's real. Flag oh, medal. You're, that's real. You're really? Oh, oh, mate. Dusting it off again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Flag, oh, absolutely. Are you, or are you doing what lots oh. of West Coast people like to do and just sort of build up their hopes no, and no. then wait for them to crash? <laughs> I've actually got lots of merch at home that um, we made a lot of flag medal merch last year. Oh, yeah, you're yeah, trying yeah. to flog it off. <laughs> <laughs> you you need it to get <laughs> How's your business going? Good. Um, uh, Back Chat is my business. That's my podcast. And yeah. I'm full time media now, so working yeah. across mm. Fox Footy and, and, and interviewing greats of the game over here in WA. It's been good. Was um, that hard to carve out what you're going to do after football? Yeah, it was. Yeah, I was, I was doing podcasts when I was playing footy, um, yeah. Which, yeah. which doesn't make a lot of money as a footballer because you're getting paid to play football. Yeah. So instead of, yeah. you know, make money and make a living out of it, you got to grind pretty hard with sponsors and yeah. um, getting the right people on. And, you know, we've got, we got a decent team behind us doing stuff with Back Chat now, but. Kind of. You look around media, right? You guys are, I think, you're probably the only people in the entirety of the media world that just do one type of media. If you look across media... Hmm. You can if, download our podcast. Even, no, but like. even even the best football callers in the business, Brian Taylor, yep. they write articles. They're on TV. There's yep. like TV, I've radio. got a column in the Sunday Times. Settle down. There we go. <laughs> well, well, the rest no, of us, we I, haven't been co- to do anything. It's <laughs> a compliment to you guys. Like I, I think yeah. media is brutal. Like, you, yeah. There's not oh, many jobs going it's out fickle. there yeah. where you just do radio yeah. or you just yeah. do newspaper or and you just yeah, do TV. To so, do it for a while as so, well. So, yeah, I wrote, I wrote 120 articles last year for Code Sports because I was trying to get paid. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. Doing, you know, wow. writing and then um, podcasts. Do you with... get paid per word or paid per article? Um, uh, no comment. I don't know. Uh, no, per article. Per article. Yeah, there's so, usually so a I word submit, rate. Submitted a, couple, yeah. submitted a couple of three word articles. Got paid. Yeah. <laughs> Thirty <laughs> cents. Is that. I, that's, um, I've got nothing. Because <laughs> <laughs> you were involved with Masto selling boots for a yeah, while. Yeah, yeah, we'll sell, were. We'll sell, yeah, heroes and comrades. Yes. We had um, coffee cheaters, which you guys. Yes. Right. No. No, we, we need to bring coffee cheaters. Coffee cheaters. Yeah, was a big deal, wasn't well, it? we got you oh, up to ten thousand, and then Correct. you basically and then all you abandoned bailed. it. I didn't bail. You did. Maston tried to take over, and he's not. Uh, he's not yeah. the sort of. He's not the guy that was running it. He he's was not just, a natural leader. So he was, he's saying. No, he's a leader, but he was. He was the guy. He no. was the hype guy. But then he tried to be the. You know, the skipper. Oh the yeah. Driver. Okay. So JK was the first. Kennedy was. Yeah. The, he was out though. Ken- the, Kennedy he sooked it up. Yeah, he sooked yeah. it up. Right. So Josh Kennedy came in one day. So I can't do this anymore. So what? Can't come to coffee once a week. Yeah, too much of a commitment. Yeah, I've got a family. He came in and he was he was upset with the abuse. It was, <laughs> because you, I don't know if you remember, but yes, you said, you, we, yes. used to, we used to if pick you went a, to a bad place yes. and yes. you'd get absolutely ripped shreds. Yes, yes. Yeah. and if somebody approached you that was points off. And he, and, he, yeah. he came in and he was almost in tears one day. He was like, can't do this anymore. I can't handle the pressure. I can't do it. So Kennedy was gone. Steve Armstrong, yep. Sam Butler, Chris Mars and myself. Mm. I've still got my key ring. I've got my key ring on my keys. Oh, so wow. So we give it, got the coffee cheaters. Got the OG, yes. OG, OG double star, yeah. which means I'm an OG yeah. coffee yeah. member. Double yes. star is a double legend status on yes. coffee cheaters. Jeez, guys, you've had Can memories say, flooding. I, I tell you what, I, I, remember one, I, remember, I remember one of the um, ones that Masto ripped this place a new bum hole was because of a plant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was a plant. <laughs> there, was, there was something wrong with Very the plant. Very fickle, mate. It <laughs> was fickle. <laughs> there, was, there were a lot of reasons to dismiss. <laughs> Correct. Right there. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's what I've been. I'm, I'm in, yeah, f- full time media now. And I, people ask, what are you doing for a living? And yeah. I, I, just, I, just, I just talk. 
Yeah, yeah. 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 Idols talk S H I T on all platforms. That's all we do too. Yeah, yeah. It does Good. well. Does Sco, well. before we let you go, because we've got to get to the news, yes. um, give us a couple of players that we can, uh, bits of gold, a couple of nuggets out that people can chuck into this. Right. So the good value guys in Western Australia, right? right. Yep. Elliot Yo, right. Nat Fife, yep. Oscar Allen. Okay. Right. Oscar people Allen. forget These about are, him. They're good value, yep. are they? Yeah, yeah those guys yep. are bargain yeah. buyers. Weirdly enough, wow. Peter Do- Allen. <laughs> <laughs> Do- Love them, Which one's Peter Allen? Is that, is that, is that the potato guys that used to sing about potatoes and stuff? No, no, no. no, no he's the, um, the boy from Oz. Oh, right. When yeah. I still call yeah. the Smiles at me. Yeah, I go to Rio. Tom Cole is a bargain. Oh, yeah, Tommy. Dom Sheed. Dom Sheed will play every game in the midfield. There's a lot of West Coast bargains because they were crap last year, right? Yeah, sure. Fremantle. You got set and forget guys like Andy Brayshaw. Just get him in your team. Yeah, yeah. Just put him in your team. And a couple of point of difference guys. So guys that people might not have. And I'm very West Australian focused here. Yeah, yeah, I thought, well, we are in Perth. Uh, Nick Nananui, Sean Darcy, the two Ruckman. Yeah. I think both of those guys could have very big years this year. And not many people could have. I don't know about Nick. Nick's got to get on the park. Yeah. Nick's got to get on the park. But... In fairness to West Coast, there's no other Ruckman at West Coast. So if Nick's playing, he's, mm. pl- he's playing. He's playing. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Supercoach.com.au. It's free to play. 50K up for grabs. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Zinger Burgers left, right and centre. I, 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 can I win the 50K? Yeah. <laughs> Why yeah, not? sure, why not? I why feel not? like I should be able to. Yeah. yeah. Just, we're, I think we're not so. allowed to win anything here. We're not winning. Phil, we, we don't even get tickets to go to the concert. We get nothing. That's a lie. I've seen your No, bunyo, bunyo. <laughs> um, by the way, um, you're actually really good at this. Do you want to come back? Or, um, or is the radio station too bad for you? No, I love the radio station. It's good. I love the show too. I, I listen all the time. I was at Backstreet Boys on the weekend. It was one of the, one of, if you're talking about concerts, one of the great concerts of all time. Really? I absolutely because sometimes it gets sad when you see people on the decline. Yeah. If you are not man enough to put your hand up and say, "I love Backstreet Boys," yeah. I know every word, so I want it that way. Yeah, <laughs> Backstreet's yeah. back, all right. Bit of honesty. It was, About mate. time we heard some on this show. Yeah, correct. <laughs> <laughs> correct. Anyway, super coach, get involved. <laughs> <laughs> super coach ambassador Will Schofield, everybody. <laughs> everybody. Nathan, Nat, and Sean podcast. Last night on Married at First Sight, it was... It was a showdown, wasn't it? I thought it was brilliant. So mm. we've been following the uh, bum call. Is that what it's called? Butt dial. Butt, butt, butt dial. Call. Butt dial. <laughs> why did oh I my just God. Say the bum call. Yeah, why did you say <laughs> that? The, the butt dial. The butt dial. Situation where Evelyn's bum husband was out. He accidentally butt dialed her, and then she heard. And then naturally, two, she listened yes, in. <laughs> she heard two of the husbands speaking absolute trash about their wives, both of them being Hugo and Dan. I feel like Hugo's the more innocent one out of this because his wife has been actually a, a bit of a nightmare. A mole oh, no. <laughs> Come on, get to the She has. She has. She has. She has. Um, she has. But Dan's the one that really deserved yeah. it because yeah. he is He's a super very liar. Mean to Sandy. Anyway, so like Evelyn last night at the dinner table, she just got a machine gun out and just started like pegging them all. Um, so <laughs> you're not going to hear from any of the guys, but this is just Evelyn, you know, just like doing what she needs to do. Hugo, tell the truth now, please. Don't make me go there. I don't want to be that chick. You said you couldn't stand her and you called her a see you next Tuesday. I don't want to continue to grill you. I just want you to be honest to Taylor. Okay. I know you haven't been saying some very nice things about your wife and I want you to own up to what you have said about your wife, Sandy. Somehow I don't think you're going to tell the truth here, Dan. Just be honest. Oh, I've got no problems in being honest okay. at all whatsoever. Oh, you really? Did you hold up your phone and show your ex-girlfriends boasting? Yes, Mm. he did. Evelyn, you are the best. Hello, Evelyn. Hi, Evelyn. What a introduction. Good morning. (laughs) Good morning. Dude, I thought I was watching it, and I actually watched it a couple of nights ago because I saw a preview app, and I came straight in the next day and said to my producer, Amy, you've got to get Evelyn on because she is going to be called the Queen of Australia. And just so happens, news.com.au, married at first uh, sight wife Evelyn is the Queen of the season (laughs) for questioning Dan. Firstly, I didn't realise how scary I come across by I watch Very that. scary. I'm, like, I'm quite a staunch. And, you know, a part of me was like, nah, not letting this go, not today. So when we got pulled aside, I think he really felt cornered. And I think that's when we, like, really saw, like, true Dan. Yeah. Well, first of all, he shouldn't be on the show. Obviously, he's doing that. He's there because the producers, everybody yeah. wants be on to be show. on there. Sandy shouldn't be on there either because she's getting treated like hell and she keeps buttering up all the time. But my question to you, Evelyn, 
How the hell did you get on this show? Firstly, your hottest chips. It's not as though you're so going to be why? fighting. You mean bloody... why did you? Yeah, get on and the show? so then I go, is it because it's just reality TV? You were on Big Brother before, so over in the UK. So then you come over and go, here's an opportunity to get back on, or or, or what? Because how could you not find a man? <laughs> Let's be honest. Well, I guess it might just come down to my personality then, doesn't it? <laughs> Sean, sure, you this morning didn't particularly like her personality before. No, you I, thought, last I, thought, night. I thought your attacking us particularly to Hugo was terrible. That's what I, th- I thought. Because you can have a conversation before you start yeah. going, people. Because yesterday I was raving about you, Evelyn. I was going, oh, my God, we're going to get Evelyn. She's so amazing. And then Sean said the first thing we walked in, he goes, oh, your mate last night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that so? Yeah, yeah, yeah so that's true. Oh, that's true. Yeah. It's all coming out now. What, so, why, you, Evelyn, why can't you get a partner? Let's be, mate. Um, I think people just have this assumption because I guess just because you arguably think that I'm good looking that it's easy for me, but it's not the case. Like meeting someone special, it, it's hard work. It takes a lot. And I almost think it's kind of harder when people are intimidated by you, which I do get a lot. It's also really hard when people don't find you attractive just saying. (laughs) (laughs) I think it's a lot harder. That's the hardest thing you go through. Just speaking on my behalf. (laughs) Evelyn, do you think that, I mean, have you watched the show before? Have you seen previous series? Um, I saw snippets yes. of the last series and I kind of thought, you know what, the guys... Are Evelyn, I'm calling you out on that. Come um, on, No, mate. but because but the reason I ask is that if you are genuinely looking for, uh, for love from a, a guy that's going to treat you well... Historically, those guys don't go on this show. <laughs> no, there are there are usually no, a few. Two, you just have to few, be lucky enough to snag that's one. Right, they're few and far between. Yeah, yeah. yeah. there's a sheer weight of numbers that, that you're not going to get a great guy. Rupert's all right though. Firstly, I honestly haven't seen the show, so whoever was yeah. tuckling in the that back there, Sean, not Sean. Sean. I don't believe it's all, you. It's all Sean. Go him, Evelyn. Calling go him, Evelyn. No, I'm calling you out, Evelyn. Get him, Evelyn. You Evelyn, Evelyn, you're, believe believe you're on shows before, and you you're telling me that you never saw that before you went in there. Come on. I saw the snippets. I mean, I understand the concept. It's really not that hard to work out. How long were the snippets? Did the snippets snippets go for an hour? Sure. They're TikToks. And as I was saying before, I was rudely interrupted that I thought the guys were actually okay. Yes. Before I decided to go on, I was like, there's no way that, you know, anyone's like going to be my type. And then looking back, I was like, you know what? They're actually, the guys are actually get they're, they're not bad. Maybe this could work. So then I jumped in. Nathan, Nat and Sean is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcasts.com.au. Nova.